Hey everyone, we are going to continue in this series of working with stored procedures and SQL data sources. We've, uh, we've done a select, we've worked on an insert, and now we're going to work on an update. And so I'll go ahead and create a page to update a, an employee. So we're going to call this update.aspx. I'm going to copy in my headings, CRUD operations, and this is going to be update data in a row. And so we're going to start out by writing our stored procedure. So if I open up uh, Management Studio, I'll go into my stored procedures for my database, and I'll create a new stored procedure. And I'll use the template and we'll call this SP stored procedure update employee because that's what we're going to do. Uh, now I will put the little disclaimer in here that uh, ahead of time I practiced the update and the order of these parameters did make a difference for me. In other words it did not work if I did not put the parameters in this specific order. Um, it has to do with how um, the grid view control works uh, and how it's, it's uh, made and how it's configured uh, by default so again you had to put the parameters in this order otherwise uh, this lab did not work so uh, it didn't work for me I should say so I'm going to start with the uh, employee first name and I'm also going to say that the parameters have to have the same names as the column. I mean, I'm, I'm keeping it exactly the same, uh, same data type, same capitalization and everything. And then I'm going to do the last name. Then I'm going to do the department ID. I have the lowercase letter D on ID and finally the employee ID uh, where the primary key of the table I'm updating comes last again uh, for me this update command did not work if I didn't have uh, the <coughs> columns followed by the foreign key column followed by the primary key column so I'll go ahead and write the, my update statement. Update, let me change my database. I'm going to update the employee table. I'm going to set the employee first name column equal to the parameter. The last name column equal to the parameter. the department ID column equal to the parameter and where the employee ID column equals the employee ID and uh, this is saying that you know that object already exists in the database you should not be getting that error I went ahead and deleted it like I said I practiced this ahead of time so once I create it it did complete successfully if I refresh we see the stored procedure uh, so that's on the database side so I'm going to open up Visual Studio we'll go into uh, split view here and I'm going to drag a grid view control onto my page and create a new data source, SQL data source, using the rank and connection string. Specify custom SQL statements. Now, in here, uh, you can hand code a SQL statement or select from a stored procedure. I did create a stored procedure earlier. Uh, it looks like I must have deleted it. So I'll go ahead and handwrite my SQL statement. Um, first name, last name, department ID.
Then under the Update tab, I'm going to specify the stored procedure that we just wrote. Test the query, see that that's returning our employees, and finish. Now if I go ahead and view in the browser, we need to uh, make these fields uh, so that you can edit them. So enable editing. Let's view this in the browser again. And if I update the name, you can see the name gets updated in the database and our update is working. Um, so again, for me, to get this to work, I had to have these parameters in this order. Let me just demonstrate what it looked like if I didn't. If I modify this stored procedure and, for example, originally I had my parameters in this following order, int varchar varchar int and I execute oh, there we go and I execute that notice I did not change the page itself all I did was change the procedure and if I go to edit I was getting this error uh, and this can be pretty difficult to troubleshoot uh, I spent some time looking into it and again the way that I was able to fix it was by changing the order of the parameters. It has to do with, see, I, I was under the assumption it passed the ID, then the name, then the name, then the ID from the page. Um, so I put the ID first, which matches there, put the name here, then the name here, then the ID. So that's why I put them in that order originally. When it didn't work, I recognized what the error was telling me. So that's why I thought to change the order of the parameters. Um, so I simply put the employee ID last. View it in the browser. And it works. So again, uh, Mainly, it just has to do with the default behaviors of how this of how this grid view passes its fields to the stored procedure and in what order is why you would get any type of error um, like that. Okay, so that is the update uh, for this series, and we'll move on to delete in the next video.